Hello, everyone. My name is Xian Guan. I'm a FX TE working in film industry. Today, I'd like to show you how to create this cyberpunk style hologram effect in Houdini. The idea behind this concept is this is a neon sign for a Hong Kong style seafood restaurant. The yellow text on the bottom is the name of the restaurant, and the big Chinese character in the middle is the last name of the owner. Asian dragonfish or arowana fish is often related to good luck. And prosperity of business in Asian culture. So let's get started. So let's go to File, Set Project, and then let's pick the project folder, Hologram, and then let's save as um, Hologram. And then let's change the frame range to four digits so it's easier for us. Okay, now let's go to the image here and uh, let's go to composite view and drop a image network. Let's drop a file node. So if you go to the texture folder under the project, uh, Here's uh, two images here. Let's grab these. So you might have to uncheck the show sequences because uh, uh, this might read that as a image sequence. So let's bring these two and then drop a null node. Let's say out text to one. Let's copy that and uh, change this to uh, the second one. So we're going to use these two textures to generate some geometries. So let's go to uh, object level. And then again, I like to work under dark viewport. Let's drop a geo. Um, call this text zero one. one So we're going to come up with a whole setup for the first text. And then we will apply the same thing to the second one. And uh, you can come up with some of your own design of the characters and everything, and then you can apply the same setup to them as well. So let's drop a trace node here and then go to COPS. Let's choose the uh, text one. OK, and if we go to the filters, let's uh, click the boundary color to white so it will get rid of all the white colors and then let's click the whole faces so we can have this uh, um, correct shape all right and this thing is uh, time dependent so let's put a time shape here let's put f start okay and let's drop a null node this is called this uh, text, so we can reference this note later. Let's change that. Okay, so let's put a extrude volume node here. So the direction should be Z direction. And then let's push it back. Uh, something like this, okay? Let's put a box here. So the idea is uh, uh, we're going to create uh, a box full of uh, little boxes uh, of volumes, and then we will subtract this volume. So let's get the big box around it. So we have this box here, um, and uh, let's drop a transform node. Sorry, transform. So let's put pivot, let's put it in the center. Um, let's change the size a little bit. And then let's change the z direction a little bit. Okay. 
And then this thing, the whole thing, we're going to scale it up to something like that. Okay. And now we're going to do a uh, polybabel. Again, we're going to um, view this as template. Okay. So let's do distance. Something like this. Okay. And then the division, let's do two. It's rounder. Okay. So we're going to reference this thing later for sure. So let's just take box called a box, the null node. So let's, uh, so we're going to uh, convert this to a volume and then we're going to manipulate the volume a little bit to get the points uh, we want. So you're probably curious, uh, why do we have to do a volume points and then volume? The idea is I find that uh, if we are uh, creating any kind of uh, volume is a lot easier to manipulate from the points than just manipulate the volume itself. Uh, so let's drop a uh, uh, VDB from Polygon. Okay. And uh, this is definitely too high res, sorry, too big. So let's put it a lot smaller. Um, we're going to do a uh, because we're gonna we're gonna need some points to fill the inside as well, so let's do a fog instead. Okay, and then let's start making a. Um, so the wop, uh, sorry, the soft node we're gonna use is the points uh, from volumes. So basically, this is the BDB right now. So we're gonna convert this uh, BDB to to volume, and then we're gonna get uh, points from volumes. But for now, let's uh, drop a um, volume blob here. Let's, let's uh, go ahead and do something with this. So let's turn on manual mode for now, because this uh, volume is uh, pretty high actually. Uh, let's go to WAP and then put a multiply on the density. Uh, because sometimes if the density, the whole volume's density is really low, if you do some kind of uh, math on it, and then the value get really low and you can't really see anything. So let's bump this up, multiply, and then label uh, density multiply. And then let's uh, just multiply that by five for now. So the idea is uh, we're going to do a uh, grid on x and y direction. And the z direction doesn't really matter. So let's do relative to bounding box. The first file, position, okay, and then vector to flow. Okay. So the function we're going to use here is the modulo function. So let's test on the x for now. So uh, modulo by promote that. And here we're going to call this a uh, unit. Let's call this unit. And then we're going to divide this again by the, uh, sorry, the unit. Okay. And then we will multiply this as well on the density. Okay, the unit here, let's go for something tiny. Because this is, everything is all relative. Uh, so pick something that, so if we do this one, the 0 0.02, we're going to have uh, um, uh, 50 lines in each direction. Okay. So this is something we have here. So if you do density to one, you can see that it's really um, a lot of the low values, you can't even see them because they're too low. 
and then uh, let's put a, a ramp here, ramp parameter. We'll just call this a uh, modulo ramp. And split ramp, um, this, okay. And then let's do something like, so here let's do a constant. And then at the end we always want one, but then something here we want uh, the values to only uh, stay at certain sections. So this is going to thin out a lot of the areas. Otherwise, uh, if you uh, change this, to a lower value, it's going to be a lot thicker. So we don't want that. We want something uh, clean and sharp, something like this. Okay. And uh, um, so we have uh, X direction now. So let's just do the same thing. So we just uh, uh, copy paste these two and then change the input to the Y direction. And then we're going to do another uh, ramp here as well. Uh, something like that. Okay. And then we're just going to copy the first ramp to the second one. And then we're going to uh, multiply these. Okay. So let's see what we have. So we get a grid here. Um, uh, it looks good, but the problem is it just looks so even. And, uh, you know, you probably want some area that uh, are missing, you know, some area has lower values, things like that, because this is just way too even. So let's do something like this. Let's go inside. Because the x, y direction matters and the z direction doesn't matter, so let's drop a vector to flow. Sorry, vector to float. And then float to vector. And just plug in x and y. So this way, uh, the z depth doesn't matter. And let's drop a anti alias flow noise. Put this in position and then. Let's promote the frequency offset, amplitude, and uh, roughness. And here, let's put, uh, so let's copy parameter, paste relative, paste relative. So you can just tweak this value here. And usually I like to put it as a 4.5. And this way, usually the maximum is negative, uh, is one, and the minimum is uh, negative one. So let's do a fit range. Because density can't be negative here. And then we can put another ramp. Okay. And this is called uh, noise ramp. So if you accidentally name these two, the name and the label is the same, uh, it's going to cause you some trouble. So just make sure that, uh, you know, always do different names for these two. So let's multiply that. Okay. And then the frequency, let's try something like uh, three. And then the noise ramp for now, let's just uh, just do a linear. Okay. And uh, you know, you probably don't want um, these to be completely disappear because um, these are just a little bit too, too big. 
So let me increase the frequency. And then here I'm going to do, um, let's see, 2.2. So negative would be 0.2. And then here I'm going to put another one. Oh, sorry, the value should be 0 0.2. Somewhere around here. And then we want something like this. Okay, so it's missing some area, but not missing a lot of the area. And now let's do another um, uh, noise to kill some of the areas instead of using, using this uh, noise of the density. So let's drop another Antalias flow noise. And uh, it's the same thing. So we just put that in and then promote all of these values. And again, uh, fit range right to one to one. And let's do a ramp. So here we're going to call this a uh, kill ramp. And then we're going to apply, multiply this. Well, okay. So the idea of the kill ramp is, uh, again, these needs to be constant. So it's just going to kill certain value. Uh, if the density is lower than that, um, kill it. So the frequency. Um, copy paste, same thing really. And let's try um, something small or like a higher frequency. Oh, also the amplitude you want to do 4.5. Okay. So this way we get some, uh, we get some density noise also we're having like a not so even look so let's plug this into convert to volume and then let's get the points well first of all the it looks like this because the point resolution here this value here the point separation it's not correct so let's actually just plot the voxel size of this one into that. And uh, okay, so we're getting the points now. So the next lesson we will uh, continue to work on how to create the parts that connecting the points on the X and uh, Y directions. Because right now you can see that all these points, they're just only running from uh, positive Z to negative Z. In the last video, we came up with this point cloud of grid. Now we're going to create some of the points on X direction and Z direction. So let's get started. First of all, uh, we only need those points to be, uh, let's say, on the Z max and Z minimum. We don't really need anything happening in the middle. So let's uh, chop this thing into two sections. So first of all, let's do a uh, point wrangle. And um, so let's just do PX equals to And just copy that. Change it. Why? Oh, so let's do a split. And here we're going to do, so we're going to separate the points um, on the, around the positive Z and the negative Z. So points, here we do PZ is smaller than, let's do a centroid. 
uh, points from volume. Okay, so this is gonna split the, uh, let me jump, drop a null node here. So the points are split on positive Z and negative Z. Uh, let's uh, invert the selection. So let's just work on uh, the positive Z first, and then we can basically just copy the same setup to the negative one. So let's drop a cluster points. Okay, so for the cluster points, we're going to use the uh, P by, and then we're going to call this uh, cluster Y here. And then the the clusters, the number of the clusters, we're going to use the volume blob, the unit. So copy and base relative reference, use 1 divided by that, so that's 50. And then um, uh, we're gonna uh, I'll put everything. Okay, let's plot that in. Okay, so we're gonna use the same setup. We'll just copy that and paste it. And now we're gonna use this uh, as the X, and it's same thing. All right, so we have uh, X and Y. Uh, now what we're gonna do is, uh, because the goal here is we want uh, every single one of these streak to be one cluster. So let's drop a plan rem here. Okay. And uh, let's plug this in. So the color you see right now, this is uh, a visualization of cluster Y. So the idea is we're going to use cluster Y to multiply 50. And then uh, we will add that on top of cluster X so that every cluster has their own cluster number. So let's go ahead and write that. Uh, cluster equals to uh, cluster Y multiply number here and then plus uh, so we're going to read the cluster x from this one so let's do a point uh, the first input and then the cluster x and the current point number Okay, and then we're gonna, so we have this number here. Ideally, the number should be the same as the uh, clusters, but uh, just to be safe, we put it on uh, 10 on top. Okay, so let's put a uh, color so that we can preview the how the cluster looks like. Uh, random, and then let's do cluster. So one thing is uh, here, the channel needs to be integer. Otherwise it's gonna give you an error. Okay, and then let's preview the color. Okay, so this way we have uh, unique cluster numbers. Now let's put down a for each node. Uh, let's do it for each connect pieces, even though it's not really connected, but uh, well, we're just using one attribute. So let's do points and then cluster. Okay. So we have these. So the, the point number could be um, really chaotic here. So what we're going to do is let's do a sort. Let's sort by the z, z direction. 
And then let's do a reverse. Okay, and then let's just do blast. Zero. Okay. So this way we get uh, all the front points. And we can use the same setup for the back side as well. Now let's think about how we can calculate if we should connect one point to another point or not. There are two cases. For example, let's say this one. There are no points around it that are missing. So we're going to connect this one to the one on the left, right, top, and bottom. That's fine. But there are points like this one. There are some points around it that are missing. We're going to connect this one to the one on the right and one on the bottom. But we don't want to connect it to this one because we kind of want to keep that gap in the final result. Also, we want to ignore the points on the diagonal as well. So the way we approach this is uh, we can basically isolate the points that are really, really close to this point. And then we can calculate a vector from one point to the other. If the vector is horizontal or vertical, then it's ideal. We're going to connect them. Great. But if this vector is, let's say, from this point to that point, uh, this is 45 degrees, or let's say 30 degrees, 60 degrees, then we're not going to connect those points. So let's drop a null node here. And then let's drop a for each number. Uh, by the way, I turned on the view show for selected nodes so I can kind of see the dependency between different nodes. So the iteration is basically how many points we have. So let's put endpoints, no three. So it's going to do 2085. And if you go to the for each count node, and then if you go to geometry spreadsheet detail, you can see that uh, it's going to do um, the number of the iteration is 2085 and the current value is 2085. And the problem is uh, the i value start at one, but the point number starts at zero. So just be aware of that. Let's drop a split note here. And when we're going to use the for each count. So points and then detail. Uh, let's do for each uh, count one. The attribute is I value, and then the first one. And then we're going to do minus one, and then back tick. Uh, okay. So we get one point. And then the rest of the points are uh, here. Okay. This is that one point. Okay. So we're going to isolate all the points that are really, really close to this one. And we're going to calculate the vector. So let's do a point bop. Let's actually use this as the first input and the current point as the second input. So let's go inside. And uh, um, let's drop a, a get attribute. Or you can use bind or parameter if you want to. Um, second input, uh, the first point, because there's only one point, and the attribute is p. So we're going to do distance, the current point position, and the uh, second point position. And the distance is a flow. So let's just uh, export that. Let's put a parameter here and then call it uh, dist. Uh, we're going to export uh, when input is connected and invisible. And uh, we're going to also calculate the, the vector a bit. So let's do a subtract. 
Um, let's put the point here and the get attribute, the point. And then, so one thing you, you want to be aware of is uh, you see that because we did the polybabble thing, so this is slightly curved, but we really only just care about uh, this vector on x and y direction. We don't really care about the z direction. So again, let's do a vector to float and then float to vector. And let's just connect these two and then we can normalize it. And let's uh, uh, export this as the normal. I'll just, okay. All right. So we have something like this, and it's uh, ignoring the z direction. Okay. So let's do a sort by distance. Sort by attribute, and then attribute, let's do distance. So if we take a look at the geometry spreadsheet, let's just hide attribute, and let's do distance. We can see that. Uh, it is going from small distance to uh, bigger distance. Okay, so let's just do blast. We're gonna isolate the eight points around it. So that would be zero to seven. Okay, and then delete, non-select it. All right, so we isolate the uh, points that are here. And now, um, to the second step of how we calculate this is uh, we're going to calculate if the normal is horizontal or not. Assuming the vector is horizontal or vertical, the value would be 100 zero zero or 010. Zero zero. The difference between x and y value is very huge. So you just have to compare the value difference on the two axes. So let's drop a point bob here. And let's put a uh, vector to float, uh, plug the normal in. And let's do a uh, max value of x um, and y. So first of all, you need a absolute value because we are only worry about the length. We're not really uh, worrying about the negative or positive. So let's put the maximum here. And then let's put a minimum. Here. Side. Okay. So if you subtract these two, the maximum subtract uh, minimum and let's divide that by the maximum and let's put the kill value here let's just call it kill export when input is connected invisible let's see if it's a good point uh, let's say it's a one zero zero then we're going to get uh, 1 here, 0 here. So that's 1. And then 1 divided by 1, that's almost 100. So even if, considering the float data type, um, even if you're going to get, let's say, 0 0.01 uh, difference, that's still a value that's really close to 1. But let's say if this is a normal, that's uh, 45 degree to the x and y axis, what you're going to get is a 1, 1, and here this is 0. And then 0 divided by 1, that would be 0. So this value would be 12, 0. So we only need to kill uh, any points that has a really, really low kill value. So let's just do uh, blast. Um, so let's do a kill less than 0 0.9 okay, points. All right. 
And uh, so this way, all the points we're going to get are good points now. So we can go ahead and uh, just uh, connect them now. So let's do for each point. Um, plug this in and plug this out. And let's just copy paste that. And then this one, um, we're going to do a fetch input. And then the input would be the current point, which is, uh, let's actually put a null here. And then put this one in. Okay. And then let's just merge it. And, uh, just add it. Okay. And let's go to polygon and polygon zero. Let's put star because this is only just two point, right? Um, okay. So you can see that here, this is connecting all the points for us. And then if you look at uh, this one, so we get this result here. It's connecting all the horizontal and vertical points, and uh, it left all the gaps for us. In the next video, we will apply this to the Z negative points, and then uh, we will continue work on this volume. In the last video, we came up with setup of these connecting points, and now we're going to apply the same setup to the points on the Z negative. So let's just uh, copy paste everything. So let's just select everything and then just paste here. The only difference here is uh, just the sort one because the Z direction is the opposite. So we're going to reverse the point sort and then uh, let's see how it looks like. Okay, so we got something like this for the back side. And now we have the front back, and then we're going to uh, include the original points we have. Um, so that would be somewhere around here. So let's just uh, put a uh, now there. So let's call this one um, initial point, init point. And then just put it here. And then let's just object merge that in. So that's cleaner. Otherwise, it's uh, um, a little bit messy in this whole scene. So into this object, uh, initial point. OK. And then let's put a merge here. So merge that. The result we got from these setup are still lines, but we actually want points for the volume. So let's put a resample here. And uh, let's use the uh, maximum segment length. The length we're going to use, so let's go back to the original, uh, the volume here. So let's just uh, copy the voxel value. And then let's just uh, paste that here. And let's do 0 0.5. Okay. And then, and now we can um, just drop a add node. And then just delete geometry but keeps the points. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other side as well. Okay, that. And then we're going to merge all three. All right, so this is uh, what we have. And uh, because this is not time dependent, this is just uh, a few points, so we can consider cash this one out. Uh, so let's put a ROP geometry output and uh, let's color this. Uh, let's call this uh, uh, geo. 
so that we know what it is, text one. And then for these uh, little grid volume, I just call them uh, box. And because this is non-time dependent, so let's put static here. Now, we don't really need any uh, frame range because this is static again. And then here, uh, let's get rid of the hip name, which is the file name. And uh, that's actually what we really need here is um, uh, we need a the node name. And then we actually we need a version as well like this. And then we don't really need the frame number. So what you're going to get is uh, um, geo, uh, this note name, version, and then the uh, file name. OK. All right. And then let's just drop a file node. And then just copy that name. So here we're just going to call this uh, uh, read and um, we're just gonna copy path paste relative reference and then the messy frame we'll just do you now geometry okay so I'm gonna cache this thing uh, to the disk save to disk all right, and then just reload it. All right, so we got something like this. Visual Effects Studios tend to have some tools that can help you with this process. So when you drop a cache node, uh, there will be another uh, render node here in the output together with your mantra. So you can just send your cache with the render together on the farm, or you can set up the dependency on the farm, whichever you like. So at home, I just tend to put a fetch node here. And then uh, I'm going to fetch the, so let's just color this for now. And uh, let's call this uh, uh, fetch uh, geo text 01 box static. OK. And then um, because in the whole process, you're going to do a lot of uh, fetch like this. So what I really like to do is um, uh, I like to put a expression here. So go to o OBJ uh, text 01. And then I'm just going to spring replace. So you need a back, back tick. Uh, string replace. So let's just replace the um, name of the current node. So it's going to replace the, sorry, you don't need this one, double quote. Uh, it's going to replace the name of this node, the part where it says fetch and score to uh, nothing. Okay. So if you mouse click it, and if you just go there, so it's going to fetch this node here. And then later you can um, put your render and all the sim and everything under it. So you can uh, just do the whole thing together if you made some changes at the opera area. OK, so let's go back there. Let's put a color here because we do really we don't need the cluster color anymore. OK, something like this. And then uh, let's do a VDB from particles. And uh, so we're going to use, again, we're going to use the same uh, voxel value on this VDB from polygons. So let's just copy, um, paste that. And then the, uh, the point radius scale, we're just going to do uh, copy parameter, paste relative reference, and then to multiply. OK. Um, right. So let's just plug that in. 
Uh, so make sure that uh, you, you change the settings to uh, fog. So you might run into problems like, oh, why is my volume not showing up? Well, the reason is uh, the density is probably too low because the particle is really tiny and uh, you know it probably just, just doesn't pick up enough uh, density. So let's just do a volume wrangle here. And we'll just do density multiply by five. And then let's plug that in. And we can see the volume. Uh, because this thing is not really like a fire or something, we can always uh, scale up and down the volume later or in the shader. So uh, don't worry about it. Next thing we want to do here is uh, remember when we first try to generate the points, uh, we get like a noise for the density. So we're going to do those here as well. So let's just bypass the uh, volume wrangle. We're always going to, we can always uh, put that one back again. So let's just copy that and uh, paste it here. So we can uh, just uh, recycle this. So in here, we can get rid of the uh, the modulo thing. We don't need these. And uh, we can keep the kill as well. And we can keep the density multiply as well. Um, yeah, OK. So let's plug this in and uh, Uh, let's see uh, if we need to change any of these values. Or actually, let's go ahead and uh, uh, get rid of these uh, two ramp so it's cleaner. OK. What we can do here is, uh, well, we already have the density multiply. And uh, we can just uh, get all the settings from that one. So we can uh, ignore the modular ramp, and then let's just uh, copy the frequency, uh, paste the frequency here, and uh, we're not really worrying about the offset or anything. And uh, this is good, and the noise and ramp and everything is good. Here, I'm just spending some time to make the volume looks better, so you can spend some time on the noise pattern, the frequency, amplitude, roughness, and the ramp, and the overall density scale as well to uh, get something you like. So I wanted to add something else to the volume, which is uh, I want the density to have a fade off from Z positive to Z negative. So let's drop a volume wrangle here. And um, let's do a, a density multiply. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna do a relative box. Uh, first input, and then the uh, position. And we're gonna want the Z here. Okay, something like this. And uh, it probably, um, kind of killed too much density. So let's add uh, something more here. So before this, what we can do is uh, we can actually do a ramp here as well. So let's do a channel ramp. Uh, let's call it density ramp. And then here, uh, density. And then we can uh, and then we can uh, because this is all uh, went down to under one, so let's actually um, do a uh, multiply again. Multiply. Okay. 
let's just bump this up. Again, here I am uh, tweaking the volume wop and the wrangle together to uh, get something that I like. So you don't want the low density and the kill density area to be too big because remember we have to actually do a boolean of the uh, Chinese character in the middle. But uh, at the same time, you do want some kind of uh, contrast as well. Once you get something that you like, uh, let's go back to the uh, the character here, this one. Uh, so we're going to use that to basically kind of like a Boolean thing. So let's put a transform here. And then um, uh, again, we're going to use the centroid. And then let's just scale this up on the direction so that um, this way it doesn't leave any of the bits at the front and the back. So let's do a uh, VDB from Polygon. Sorry, VDB from Polygon. Again, we'll be using the same uh, box size from this one. So let's just copy and paste that. And then this needs to be a fault as well. And uh, again, the density is probably really, really low. So all you have to do is um, put a volume wrangle here and uh, just do density. Multiply. Let's do a multiply by 40. And then uh, it's really bright, but uh, it's fine because we're just going to use this to uh, subtract that. So let's put a uh, VDB combine. And we just put this in the first and this in the second. Well, let's do a um, let's do a subtract. All right, so we get this uh, character here. We can cache this one out. Uh, let's just copy this and paste the. Um, cache node. Right. Okay, we don't need the static. And uh, this is going to need the uh, frame range. So I start at end. And uh, this is going to need a uh, F4. Something like this. Okay. So for now, this is just uh, uh, this is static for now, but uh, we'll be uh, adding some animations later. Okay. And let's drop a. Uh, now node, and then let's put a output as well. So I'm just gonna call this uh, out uh, box. And let's just uh, color this one to that. Okay. So if we go up to the object level, and then let's just drop a geometry here. And then let's change the shape to that. And let's remain, rename this render uh, text 01 underscore box. And then um, we don't need these. Well, actually, we don't need these either. So let's change the color to that. And uh, what I often like to do here is uh, I'm just going to drop a uh, object merge. And then in here, I'm going to do um, input path. Again, you need backtick for this to work. So what this does is um, this node render text01 box 
whatever it's connected to the parent node, uh, it's going to grab the outbox uh, in that one. And then, um, so imagine if you have a whole bunch of text, you can just uh, copy paste that and it's just going to grab all the outbox node for you. So let's put a now node here. So we're gonna, and actually let's put a volume uh, visualization node as well. Uh, let's put the uh, display, the flag of render on this. And then the uh, volume visualization, uh, let's put the density here. And uh, we only need uh, one color really. So this color, let's do something like, uh, actually we don't need this. Um, something like, uh, like a crayon color. Okay, something like this. And because uh, we uh, we have this cache now, so let's just bypass that for now. And uh, it's doing that because the density value is uh, quite low right now, so you might want to increase this. And the diffuse field needs to be density as well. Okay, so you get something like this. Um, so it's not necessarily 100% uh, accurate to your final renders, but this is a, a preview that you can kind of take a look at. So the next video, we're going to take a look at how to add some other features to this thing, include the contours, all the little crosses, uh, and the fog element as well. In the last video, we created a volume box for the character. Now let's add more features. Let's uh, add a contour lines for this. So let's drop a add node to uh, get rid of the primitives. And then we're going to copy two points. So let's generate some points. Let's drop a line here. And uh, let's uh, put this to Z direction, and then let's actually put this in the center as well. So text and DX, let's just copy that. And uh, you can see that the center um, is not in the origin. So let's put the length there, copy. Paste relative reference. Uh, so let's do negative multiply 0.5 uh, plus. Okay, so let's change the length to something like 0.65. Okay. And uh, you know maybe you, later you wanna you wanna remove. Uh, the let's say we we want to put this uh, a little bit forward or backward. Um, let's say uh, we put it back a little bit. Uh, okay, and uh, let's uh, resample this thing because right now it's only uh, it's only two points. So let's resample and. Uh, Maximum segment 20. Okay. And uh, let's just um, uh, do a sort. Uh, let's see. Uh, just to make sure. Let's uh, do an add. And we only need the point, we don't really need the. Uh, primitives, to be honest. Okay, so the idea is uh, we want to keep 
uh, most of the points in the front. And then when it goes further away along the z-axis, we want the points to uh, the amount to be reduced. So let's put a point wrangle here. Okay, so let's first of all let's put a ramp equals to flow um, PT num divided by uh, endpoints. So here we're gonna put let's plug the uh, this also in the first one. Okay, so if you look at the ramp, you can see that it's uh, increasing uh, using the the point number. And because the point number is uh, smaller here, larger here, so the value of ramp is higher here and less here. And then let's do a uh, if random uh, point number multiply here you can just put your own um, seed here, no matter what number you use, um, as long as it's big enough. And uh, we're going to say if the random value is uh, higher than a value, then we're going to remove this thing. So let's put a ramp so that we can kind of adjust uh, the value of the delete threshold. So here, the delete threshold, we're going to use the uh, ramp. Ramp. Okay. And here, let's just do remove point. Uh, so remove the current point. Uh, oh, so we're missing one bracket. Okay. So it is already doing something here. Um, so what this little uh, snippet does is uh, because the ramp value after even after the this channel ramp. Um, it's really high here and low here. So when you do, uh, when you calculate the random using the point number, and then if this value is higher, then you're going to remove it. So basically any of the points at the end, uh, they have a higher chance to be really uh, deleted, but not going to delete all the points at the end. Um, so let's uh, do change a little bit of this uh, ramp. Uh, let's do Camu ROM. Uh, something like this. Okay. So when you change the seed, it's going to give you a different result, but uh, it's pretty similar. So it's going to keep most of the points um, towards Z positive. Okay. So before we... Um, start copy to the points. Let's just uh, do some um, preparation. So let's put a point wrangle. Uh, this is something that I really uh, I like to do whenever I do copy to points. So you want to set up the normal. Um, so you always want to set it to Z direction. And the up vector, we want to do y direction. So this way is just safer. And then uh, it doesn't hurt if we put the ID on it, which is uh, always going to be useful at some point. OK, and let's uh, do a copy, uh, copy to point. And just plug that in, plug this in. All right. So something looks like this. 
and you can adjust the seed if you like you know if you feel like um this is so dense um on the side and you can always adjust it all right so let's put the um uh, okay so we got the id and the wrap and everything all right so let's put the color uh on this uh, let's drop a point well Okay, so we're going to use the, because it already got the ramp value from the copy point. So let's just do get attribute, uh, first input, uh, point number, and then float, uh, ramp. And then uh, let's put a uh, ramp parameter. So we're going to use the RGB ramp because this is going to be color. CD ramp. Okay. And we'll just put that in the color. So for the CD RAM, um, let's do, um, first of all, let's just do cat, cameo ROM. Um, here we want black, that's fine. And then let's uh, add a few more. So here we want something, something blue. Uh, so let's uh, put something like, um, Something like that, and then um, sometimes uh, I see that people are afraid to go over one, but uh, it, it's fine. I mean, when you render it, it's gonna actually pick up the higher values, especially if you do um, HSV, and then if the high value here. Um, you do like five or 10, it's always going to pick up in the renders. Um, and uh, sometimes you actually want that. Okay. And uh, this thing is really even right now. So what we want to do is that you can see that there's one on the back that's really dark. That's the black one. So we want to kind of do a fact looks like um, the lines are complete at the beginning. And then when it goes towards the end, uh, we want some of the parts that are missing. Um, so let's um, drop a anti-alias flow noise, pluck that position, and put the promote the uh, all the options for the noise, and then let's do a fit range again because I'm gonna put the 4.5 on the amplitude. So usually this goes under uh, this goes to negative one. Okay, and let's do a um, actually let's put this thing plug this in the color so we can kind of see what is going on. Okay, so copy this relative reference, this relative reference. All right, let's do something like um, 30 and that's uh, 4.5. And then roughness, you know, maybe something lower. Like this. Okay. So you can see the patterns here, but again, we want to kind of keep the areas that's uh, on the Z positive. So let's use the uh, ramp value again to do that. Um, so let's just do a uh, maximum. Uh, yeah, so this way it's going to keep that. And let's put a parameter. Um, it's called a kill. 
when input is connected, invisible. And then we want to put the color back here. All right. And um, let's call this a uh, CD block. Let's do a blast node. And let's just do points. And then if the kill is less than something like this. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, okay, sometimes the uh, the update of the viewport um, when it goes to points, uh, sometimes there's there's some lagging. Okay, so we we want to actually keep the beginning ones. So all right, this is maybe this is a little bit too too far. Um, to your taste. So let's um, let's actually add another uh, ramp for this thing because uh, um, it's too much. So let's do a ramp parameter. Okay, and then let's change that to uh, call it uh, fade off ramp. Let's do a spline uh, cameo. Right now it's zero. That's why it's uh, broken looking. Okay. And actually, you can um, look, you can add a. Uh, let's put a. Let's put a ramp on the noise as well. Uh, noise ramp. So that you can adjust the pattern of the noise. Okay. So the noise, let's uh, do something like. Uh, okay, so with the noise pattern, uh, you can see that uh, we kind of get this uh, pattern instead of uh, like really uh, tiny pieces getting um, deleted. All right, so let's adjust the fade off ramp. Actually, let's go inside and put this thing in here. Um, okay, and uh, so let's do something like this. So we keep uh, more of the Z positive values intact. Some, something like this. Okay. All right, so we got a contour for the text. Now we need a contour for the boxes. And uh, since we already got the, the setup, so it's basically it's the same. So let's just copy that. Just uh, copy and paste here. And we can just merge them and then just render them later together. Okay, let's see if we have uh, anything that we need to change. Um, so this line here, maybe we need it longer. You can always adjust these later. Um, so this one, you know, maybe you want to um, actually go forward. Uh, sample. Uh, sort. Add. All right. Um, and the the part that we're gonna copy is uh, we're we're not gonna copy the this one. We're not gonna copy the text. Uh, let's actually use the the box. Uh, let's go the box. Okay. So let's do a uh, clip. The default direction is not correct. We want um, Z direction. So let's do negative Z. And then because this thing is not in the origin, so we actually need to use the origin to cut it. So let's do a centroid. 
Uh, let's do our input paths. Okay, so what this does is it's going to read the centroid of the first input of this node. Well, there's only one input, so that's the box. Um, all right. Um, see. Oh, okay. Okay. So we get something like this. And uh, you can see that the resolution of this thing is very low. So when you uh, isolate the points around the edge, it's going to give you problems. So let's do a remesh. Oops. And let's just increase the resolution to something like this. All right, so we get something decent here. Take a look at the uh, wireframe. Um, it's pretty high, okay. That should be good enough for us. All right, so let's do a group. So. In the group, let's call this open and then group type edges. And let's turn this off and include by edges. Uh, let's check the unshared edges. So this way it's gonna isolate the areas that are uh, only open. So you can see the edge open. Um, there's some edges there. So let's do a group promote. Let's promote from edge group to points. Okay. Let's do a blast node here. And let's just uh, points. Oh, we only keep the open ones. See, something like this. All right. So we're going to use this to uh, copy paste. Okay. So we get something like this and this. And then get something like this. So you can you can always go back and uh, tweak some of the stuff. Uh, I kind of like uh, the uh, character to be more saturated than the uh, the f this frame here. So I'm gonna actually reduce the uh, saturation of the color a little bit. Uh, so let's here let's go for something like. Uh, something like this, and uh, you can punch some numbers in um, if you need to. And uh, actually, uh, I want this color to be on that one as well. So I'm just going to paste the values. Okay. Uh, again, we can always uh, come back and adjust these. So let's merge these two together. So you get something like this. Currently, there are only points, and uh, it's completely fine if you just render points. Uh, we don't really need to have any kind of edges or anything to render it. So let's uh, just put a point wrangle here. Because you, what you really need is, uh, if you render points, you need a p-scale. Uh, let's put... 2.205. And if you want to see actually how big it looks like, you can always go to uh, Geometry, Display Particle as Disk. Um, so this is uh, the roughly the size that you want. So if you, let's say if you change it to that, you know. But let's just put it back to this. And let's put it back to uh, points as well. Also, if you use the disks, you can actually view the alpha and everything uh, as well. I find pretty uh, useful sometimes. OK, so let's put a um, attribute delete, because we don't need a lot of the attributes, right? So let's just uh, get rid of uh, all these. I find that when you caching, um, it's actually, uh, if you reduce some of the attributes, it's a lot faster. So let's keep the color. Uh, if this is going to have motion blur, we're going to keep V. Uh, let's keep the ID as well. 
and uh, let's keep the he scale. Okay, and uh, let's drop a group delete as well. Uh, we don't really need any of the groups. Okay, and now we can. Um, so now you can go ahead and uh, use one of these node, and you can also do something similar like this, set up a render node uh, for the points. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at how to add the little crosses um, on top of these contour lines. In the last video, we created some points for the contour of the box and the Chinese character. Now let's add some cross lines. So let's drop a line. And uh, let's do a um, line on X direction first. And then let's put the lens, copy, paste relative reference into the origin. And then just uh, multiply by, um, by half so that it's centered. And then let's uh, do the same thing for the Y direction. Let's just put this one back. Zero, one, zero. Okay, so let's put the third one here. So the same thing, uh, you're gonna copy, paste that, and then just put this one back. And then this needs to be Z direction. Um, all right, and then let's, uh, Merge these. So let's put a point wrangle here and uh, so we need a um, attribute to isolate uh, the line of different directions. So let's just put uh, attribute called LID uh, line ID. And then let's just uh, copy paste and change the second one and the third one. All right, so it's something like this. And uh, because uh, the whole thing goes from Z positive to Z ne negative, so let's just put a transform here. Uh, just push this thing back a little bit. Uh, something like this. Okay. Now let's add some points to copy this to. Um, so we have this box here. Uh, let's uh, put a uh, uh, because this is poly beveled. So let's just put a box here. Now let's move this to the side. So we only need. Um, the points of the box. We don't really need um, anything else. So let's just delete geometry, but keep the points. And then uh, let's say add a point wrangle here to write some of the, uh, set up the scale for this before we start copy it. So first of all, um, let's put a uh, ID there. Uh, it's always going to be handy sometimes. Point number. All right. And then let's write the scale here. So you can use P scale, and uh, P scale is a float type. And you can use uh, scale as well, which is a uh, vector type. Uh, so let's put scale equals to, uh, let's do a set. And then here we're gonna do um so let's do one axis one by one so first of all when you do random it's always uh um zero to one so let's use fit zero one and then here let's do random um sorry rand and then let's just use id and multiply so here you can put your own uh, seed there and um, okay let's see all right so let's set the range 
um, from 0 to 1 to, let's say, uh, 0 0.5 to 1.2. Okay. And then uh, just let's see if this thing works now. Okay, so it, it's uh, working now. Now we can just copy paste that to uh, Y and Z axis. And you can uh, go ahead and uh, change the seed of this. It doesn't have to be all the digits. You can just uh, change some of them. And it should give you a different result as well. Like that. OK. And uh, so other than this, well, when you uh, do a copy to points, second, put this the first. Okay, so we kind of want to um, have uh, even more randomization on this. Uh, so let's do another uh, random here. Let's do. Um, Scale, multiply, um, again, fizz 0 to 1, uh, random. Uh, inside, let's do ID, multiply, uh, plus, and the range we're going to do. Okay, uh, you can uh, change your uh, seed to get something that you like. Okay, something like this. Okay. Now we want to have the LID uh, updated because originally there is only three. Now there is uh, uh, three by eight, so that's twenty-four. So let's do a point wrangle here just to update the LID so that we can do for each on that. So let's do LID equals to uh, sorry plus equals to uh, three uh, multiply uh, ID. Okay. And now if you go to the uh, geometry spreadsheet, you can see that uh, it's uh, 0 to 23 now. OK. And uh, let's uh, resample this thing. Resample. Um, let's put um, 0 0.005. Something like that. Okay. And now, uh, again, we're only going to need the points uh, because we don't really need the primitives because the points are so dense, you don't really need uh, primitives. Now let's do it for each node, uh, for each uh, deck of pieces. And we're just going to do uh, the LID here. Um, so it's just going to be points because we don't have any uh, primitives now. The goal is uh, we want to keep the points that are closer to the center of the cross, but uh, the points should get uh, less and less when it's spread away from the center. So we can go ahead and grab the tool that we used last time, uh, this one. So we just, uh, just copy it. Essentially, it's the same uh, idea behind that. Okay, um, it's dropping null here. Uh, okay, so for this line, um, if you still remember what we did um, in this thing, we're only using the wrap based on the whole line, but this actually we need to change the ramp because we want the ramp value to uh, have a fade off from the center to where it's spread away. 
So let's uh, um, change this thing here. Okay, so we can just put zero because uh, we can use the first. Um, and then the next thing is, um, let's rewrite this uh, ramp here. So the idea is uh, we should use the uh, ramp um, subtract 0 0.5, and then um, we can use uh, uh, use the, this value to divide the 0 0.5. And then because the problem is uh, this, you can get positive or negative value, but we don't really care. We only care about the absolute value of this. So let's put that there. And then we want to use one to subtract this. So if we want to preview this thing here, let's say we just uh, bypass this line here. Okay. And then, so let's just, uh, you know, we can put a counter here. And then let's put a point, uh, color type, ramp. Let's just do wrap. Um, and I, I personally, I like to do a uh, white to red gradient. Okay, so it's higher in the middle and lower on both sides. All right. And then um, you can change the wrap if you want, or uh, if you're happy about it, then let's just uh, keep the way it is. Okay, so it's gonna uh, get rid of that. All right, and we actually we kind of want to uh, use the ramp again. So let's uh, just uh, put that in the color for now. Uh, because uh, the problem is uh, the the ramp was actually uh, we used this in the channel ramp. This one. So the value got changed a little bit. So you kind of want to uh, preserve this. So let's just uh, uh, copy this here. And then the leave the uh, green and blue to zero. Okay, so we have something like this. So if we want to preview all the lines, uh, this is something we get. So remember when we were doing the uh, volume, the little boxes, uh, we have a feed off over, over the Z direction. So we're going to do the same thing for the color here as well. So let's drop a point bop. Sorry. And inside this, uh, let's do a relative to bind box, uh, first input, current position, and uh, we're only worried about the uh, Z direction. So vector to float, and we're gonna use the Z. And now let's put a ramp here. Uh, so this is gonna be a, a ramp color. So let's just cut ramp. CD ramp, CD ramp, okay. Z to that, and the color feed into the color. All right, now let's go outside and change the uh, CD ramp. The black is okay, and now let's add another one. Um, uh, let's put something like like a very uh, not saturated blue. And then this color we're gonna, so here let's put uh, um, something like this. Okay. So it's like a uh, not very saturated blue. And then remember we do have the ramp value here. We still want to use those to add like a taper look. 
So let's do a factor two float from the color. And uh, we're only going to keep the X because the Y and Z, they are uh, zero. So let's just put here and plug the X into it. All right, so we get some kind of taper look on this thing. But just like the contour, once we have these, uh, it's really easy to do a secondary thing on top. So what we can do is uh, we can, um, uh, let's just uh, copy paste all these stuff here. Okay. And uh, we're not going to use uh, this box because we, we kind of want to, so these are, uh, around the center. So we want to add some lines, uh, you know, around here, here, just basically surrounding it and a lot darker compared to these. So let's drop a few boxes. Uh, no, actually, let's put a transform. And let's put these uh, down here. Okay. So just turn on this preview purposes okay um so let's move the box somewhere here kind of uh, let's uh put the no not rotation so let's put the scale to it actually um here you want to use the uh, centroid as well um, and then let's just uh, shrink the like that. Okay. Uh, it's probably more. You don't really want any kind of a rotation on this. Um, so let's add another one. And then uh, put it somewhere. So let's just merge these two uh, to kind of get an idea of uh, where these are. Okay, so this one, uh, you know, maybe you want taller, uh, thinner ones, something like that. Because uh, this one and this one, the cross line are kind of longer, so I kind of want to add some balance uh, to it. Uh, something like that. Okay. So now let's uh, add a mountain node. Okay, and then, uh, so if you want to just go ahead and delete the points right now, and uh, um, it is great, but it's probably a little bit too much. So let's um, go ahead and uh, delete a few points. So let's uh, probably get rid of, uh, let's see. Points. Let's do. Let's only keep a few, actually, because we we don't really need that many. So let's keep three, four, and uh, let's keep two, uh, ten, and eleven. Okay. Um, so just uh, here, and maybe maybe one more down here. So let's keep thirteen. All right, and you can adjust the um, mountain as well. Okay. And now if you run this thing, uh, we're going to get something like this. Uh, and if you merge this with the original one, 
Well, this is definitely, I would say it's, this is definitely too much. So let's uh, um, reduce the color of these a little bit. So let's put a point wrangle. Let's see. Uh, color uh, multiply. Again, we're going to use a uh, fit 0 to 1. Um, and we're going to use a random, well, uh, we're going to fit it to 0 to, uh, let's see, 0 0.05. And the random, we're going to do uh, ID, uh, multiply, uh, just put any C there you like. Okay, so it's a lot darker. Um, so I kind of, I don't want this one actually in the middle because I want it um, some on the side. So let's say we keep uh, 14. And... Uh, let me get rid of two there. Okay. Right. Okay. So just like how we did the contour setup for these, you were going to do the same thing for um, attribute to Lee, uh, point wrangle to add the P scale, and then instead of the cache and the render node outside, and probably put a fetch node in the output as well. So in the next video, we will take a look at how we can add some volumes uh, to compensate these cross.